Buongiorno. Come stai? I thought what we would do today is look at the three, one, two, three, or European, one, two, three. This is a European pen, so one, two, three. Momento zero incarnations that I own. And there is a fourth, which right now I don't have access to, but I will talk you through. This is not a Leonardo, but this is a Pilot Metropolitan, just for size comparison. I'm not going to show you my face. I have done separate reviews of all these pens, including the one model I don't have access to right now. But I just wanted to show them to you side by side, and then I'll talk about them. And I can imagine how some people would think, why would he do another video like this? Well, the reason is I get a lot of questions like this, okay? What exactly is the difference between these Leonardo models? So the original OG Leonardo is, of course, this one, the Momento Zero, in this beautiful Positano finish, which is remains one of my favorites. It's the whole painting, really, right? I, I, I can't say that enough. Like, it's, it's just so wonderful, these swirls. Anyway, this is an acrylic. Now, the one I don't have access to right now, but I have reviewed it. Uh, you can look it up on my website, the uh, Leonardo Momento Zero in the Abyss Celluloid, is a celluloid pen which had this size, which had a piston filler and a gold nib. These were limited, and they had a couple of these celluloid pens. This, however, is acrylic. And so are the other two, and that's why I thought that this would be a, a good and fair comparison. Besides, the celluloid model is exactly the same size as this one. It just has a built-in piston, and it has a gold nib. But it's the same size and shape, so nothing changed there. Okay, this Metropolitan was just there for size comparison. Now let's let's see what the differences between these, these three pens. So, again, this is the original model, the Momento Zero. Then there was the Momento Zero Grande. And then there was the Momento Zero Grande Pistone, 2020, okay, 2020. And, again, I think this is a valuable comparison because there actually are some differences between all the pens. So, I'm going to do a writing sample. Uh, I have reviewed all the pens separately, so I'm not going to go into massive detail. I really want to compare the pens here. So, the first thing you notice, obviously, is that the Grande is bigger than the regular size. Yeah, it's the Grande. This makes complete sense. Um, some quick, quick, quick rundown. Uh, so, this is an acrylic uh, model. And some things that you should realize is this is actually a steel nib. You can purchase a gold nib upgrade and they are quite expensive. I saw that at Applebaum they are 181 euros and that's not even including that. While as, like, what, while as? Whereas this entire pen is 147 euros. So that will be about 175 US. Uh, so actually the gold nib upgrade is more than the entire pen. I'll leave it up to you whether that's worth it. I will say a thing or two about that because I have a gold nib on one of these pens. Another thing that's important to know about the regular Momento Zero model is that it has a traditional blind cap which allows you to operate the piston uh, uh, turning knob at the back here, but it's not actually a piston. It's just a converter. And it's a converter that comes out. It screws out. It's not a captive converter, it's just a converter. You can just access the turning knob from behind. Now, having said that, I think it's a nice pen. It's a nice size, especially when posted. I think this, for me, is a very comfortable size to use. That will be the regular Momento Zero. And then again, celluloid version, much more expensive. I recall those were something like 600... Am I correct in saying that? Anyway, you have to look up the review to be sure. I thought those those were something like 600 euros. Those were much more expensive, but they were in quite limited celluloids. That's it. Okay, so that's one finish, regular model. Then you got the Grande, and the Grande is, of course, bigger. It's a bit girthier. And uh, if you look at the pen side by side, again, I'm really interested in the comparison between the, the models here. You see there is more girth and there is more length. Both have a number six nib. This happens to be the only Grande I have that has a 14 karat gold nib. Okay, um, I have used the steel nib that came on it and it was also nice, but this is a very lovely gold nib. So, the Grande is of course bigger. It's a bigger pen, it can also be posted and then it becomes really quite big. The section shape is very, very similar. 
And if I thought at some point I tried, and now I forget if it's really possible. No, 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 no. I, I misremembered that. But, okay, you see this is what you see is what you get, right? It's all live, it's all discovered on the spot, it's so exciting. Anyway, so here we have this nice bigger pen, uh, in, again in this case with a gold nib. The advantage of this is that it actually has an ebonite feed, and even the steel nib had an ebonite feed, whereas the regular Memento Zero at that point had an ABS feed, and I want to say they still do, but I'm not 100% sure. So, somewhat bigger. Now, another big difference between the regular Momento Zero and the Grande is the captive converter. This is an actual captive converter. It comes with a warning not to unscrew this. And this pen, too, has a blind cap that you can unscrew. You can operate the piston turning knob here, or you can do it more traditional fashion for a cartridge converter pen, unscrew the barrel entirely, dip the pen in ink, and... Um, operate the captive converter that way. Another beautiful acrylic, and uh, that's pretty much it. Now, then we had, this is a very recent launch, Momento Zero Grande 2020, the 2020 model, which has an actual piston. So this is not a captive converter, this is an actual piston. That means that this turning knob no longer com comes off. This actually operates the piston, so I'm not going to turn this because it has ink in there. This one has a steel medium nib, and as I understand it, uh, Leonardo changed nib suppliers from Bock to Yovo, so there are slightly different nibs, and in my mind that was a good change because I found the Yovo nibs to be a little less dry than some of the other Leonardo nibs I had tried in the past. You still have the ebonite feed, which looks quite pretty to me. It's nicely curved. And, as I said, you have that actual piston. None of this unscrews. The blind cap doesn't come off. The section doesn't unscrew. It comes with a warning not to unscrew it, so I'm assuming they fixate it in place with whatever material they use, some sort of adhesive, shellac, whatever, whatever they use. I haven't attempted to disassemble this, and I don't really want to either, because it comes with a warning not to. It remains a grande, it is bigger, uh, again, it pulls, and it is quite big, right? Uh, but the piston, much to my pleasant surprise, the piston is not the only thing that changed between the uh, grande 2020 and the original grande. It's a small and subtle difference, but you may see that the cap lip actually changed. Uh, this the original model just has a step down, and that is all cap for the record, as you can see here. So there is this step down, right? Whereas the 2020 model has a smoothly tapered bit of that cap lip, which is different. It's a small and subtle difference, but I kind of like it, because to me this looks more streamlined than this, which was a little blocky. I never, I was never bothered by it, but when I saw the upgraded version I thought, yeah, I actually kind of like that, that is a nice addition. Um, so I like that what Salvatore, who makes these pens, does, is actually look at how can I improve this model further and further and further. That, that, that continuous uh, upgrading, I think, really shows the mind of someone who is continuously looking to improve his products, and I said that in the review of this pen as well, but I, I stick to that. I think that is a very good move, because you just show that you continue to improve. Another, sorry, this is really slippery background, so it's a little hard. A final thing to point out is that the Momento Zeros have a broader clip than the Grandes, that have a somewhat slimmer clip, which is supposed to be more vintagey. Uh, they all have the little wheel uh, that, that rolls at the end of the clip, which is quite a nice uh, touch. How about we look at these side by side? I have not chosen the most uh, logical ink, given the colors of these pens, but I already had this inked up with Lamy Mango for the review, and to make the comparison fair, I inked them all up with Lamy Mango. It came out well enough in the uh, in the video the first time, I think, so shouldn't be too much of a problem. So here we have 
Um, I'm not going to write down Leonardo, just to save a bit of space. Here we have the original Momento Zero. This is a fine steel nib and it is uh, quite wet. It is quite wet because I made it a little wetter. It was drier than this, but I cannot undo that process, so I'm just telling you. It used to be a little drier, as I said, balk, and now it's a bit wetter, which is more to my liking. So bear in mind, they used to be a little drier, but I'm assuming that these now also come with Yovo nibs, and as a result, that issue has been resolved. I do like the way this writes. Now, as a steel nib, it doesn't have a whole lot of yield. So don't expect much in ways of a flex nib. It is pretty stiff. Then we have the Momento Zero Grande. Which has a 14K stub and this is if I remember correctly the 1.1 this nib is nice and smooth oh and that goal let's talk about pricing when I'm done with this because the pricing is I know I, I started off with the Momento Zero but we'll, we'll end with the pricing over the lazy fox fox and fox well, bear with me here This nib is not altered by anyone. This is out of the box, nice and wet. Um, it is gold. It is a bit springier, but again, it's not a flex nib. They do also offer 14K flex nib upgrades now. So if you really want flex, you should purchase, oh, sorry, sorry for the noise. You should purchase that and not not <laughs> spring this. Here we have Uno Momento Zero Grande. 2020 pistone with the 1.5 milliliter piston as opposed to the captive converter. This has a medium steel nib. And this one is also nicely tuned, but I found a little bit drier than the gold nib. But this is out of the box, I have not done anything to this. And that's pretty much it. So, what about pricing? Is there any difference in writing? Well, if you've seen it, this is a very nice smooth gold nib. This medium is also really quite smooth, I found. And this uh, fine, I found very smooth from the start. Even when it was a bit drier, it was a very smooth writer. So I personally find this steel a little smoother than that steel. But that was Bok, and this is Jovo, and this is a bit wetter, so that will also make it smoother because it's more lubricated. But even initially, I found this quite smooth. This one has a little bit more feedback, but it's by no means scratchy. It's just a little bit more feedback. You can also tell this is not the fattest of mediums, right? Okay, now we need to finally discuss the pricing because that is quite interesting. So as I said, the Momento Zero, this OG, uh, is 147 euros and 11 cents at Appelbaum, and then it is uh, 181 uh, euros and 82 cents, with a, this is all without VAT, for a 14K nib upgrade. I mention Appelbaum because remember you can get a 10% discount there, right? So that might be interesting for you. Um, see my website banner for, or the banner on my website for that discount. Uh, so you're talking, just in US, you talk about 175 US, that is for the pen with a steel nib as you see it. So no gold nib upgrade. Then we have the Momento Zero Grande, this is the copper finish. This one uh, I found on the Nibsmith website because this finish is sold out in a lot of places. So this is like for historical purposes, but if you, you know, you may find a shop that still has one. 329 US. And then the gold nib upgrade is $220. So again, the gold nib upgrade is really quite expensive. It's almost doubling the cost of the pen, just like with this one, where the gold nib upgrade is even more expensive than the pen. I'm going to refrain from commenting on that. That's not, I, I, don't, I don't make the prices. I'm just telling you. The final thing here is the Momento Zero 
Grande 2020. This is the Girasole, the sunflower finish. Very attractive name I found, very cute. Uh, this one I found f at Applebaum for 243 euros and 80 cents. That's about 288 US. And the gold nib upgrade is 164 euros and 64 cents. So again, this is steel, as you've seen here. Again, the gold nib upgrade is really quite expensive and doesn't exactly double the price of the pen, but it's definitely becomes a lot more expensive. So the question, because that's the question that I get all the time, is the gold nib upgrade worth it? Well, I find this one to be a little softer than that as a nib, has a little bit more bounce, but it's by no means a flex nib, it's a fairly rigid nib. So I would only get it if you absolutely need gold because it's that is what your ego requires or because you think it is necessary. I have found the steel nibs to be really nice and I have used quite a lot of Leonardo steel nibs. Here is a Furore Grande with a, a steel nib, steel fine, which is also really nice. I have used other Leonardos with steel nibs that have all been nice. And sometimes, again, we're a little dry out of the box. It's relatively easy to fix yourself. Or you can send it to a nibmeister always. Um, but, but, so it's not, I, I haven't found that a, a huge deal because I have never had a Leonardo that would not write. It was just a little dry, but that's kind of a personal taste thing. They were not so dry that they wouldn't write, right? Because that, that's an objective error. I've never experienced that. So that's it. Which one do I prefer? I really like that this one has a true piston. I will say that. I really like this finish and I really like this finish and this nib but because because I like a somewhat bigger pen, hashtag relatively large hands, uh, these two are my favorites. I love that we have a true piston now. There's nothing wrong with a captive converter but it's just a little step up. It feels a bit more luxurious to have an actual piston I think and I like that tapered cap lip. I think he's really done a very good job with that. So. I hope this overview, I tried to make this as detailed as I could and really focus on differences uh, between the models. I hope this was useful and um, I will very gladly see you later. Bye!